This is Pat's Two Cents, reminding you that God's into love. We're God's Church of Love Online, and we are reading James chapter 4, and you, verse 1. From whence come wars and fightings among you? <laughs> come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. Wow. <laughs> okay, let's go to verse 5. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? Verse 6. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. Verse 7, submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Verse 8, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded Oh, my goodness. Mm, mm, mm. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord that he may lift you up. Listen, when we talk about lust, it's not about sexual lust all the time. Some lust comes through pride. Some of the way we deal with pride is through our defense mechanisms. Mm, mm, mm. And the defense mechanisms are easily manipulated by oversensitivity from emotional wounds and Satan standing there with his little imps and his demons pushing all the buttons. Go off, cuss them off. That's right. Sock them in the face. That's right. Knock them on his fanny. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, all these little, I should do this to you and I should do that, that comes straight from the enemy. But, and that's also the lust of our flesh. Now, moving right along, when you submit yourself to God and you resist the devil, the devil will flee. And my way of resisting the devil, when somebody has got an onslaught, they're coming at me like they lost their mind, as my husband would say, and lost your mind. Uh I lose my emotions in God. Instead of me reacting in the natural, reacting out of my lust, my attitudes, my flesh, everything about me and my pride. No, and it is pride too. But what I do is I recognize it for what it is. I acknowledge it and I ask God, Lord, you know me, take the ugly me out, remove the hurt. Remove the anger I'm feeling right now because you know how I want to handle this. I don't want to handle it your way. I want to handle it my way. But that's the lust. But you're resisting. You're resisting when you do that. And what happens? He gives you grace. He'll calm your spirit in a New York second. Mm. But he giveth more grace Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but he giveth grace unto the humble. So when you submit yourself to the ways of God and you resist the devil and you resist stupidity, you resist the temptation to get caught up into the knee, 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 knee of life and the pettiness of people, life is much easier. You're drawing nigh to God while a person's coming at you, getting up in your face, throwing stuff. Hang on, let me do this again like I did before with the paper towels, the illustration I showed earlier. People throwing stuff at you. No, 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 no. You bet that stuff, Lord, that's yours. That's yours. I don't want to deal with it. That's not my problem. All you got to do is help me grow from the truth that's in the middle of the mess. Just help me grow. Help me bear fruits of righteousness. Help me get me out of the equation so that I can see where you want me to be more cleaned up, where you want me to heal. Help me to see my sore spots. Help me to see my weaknesses and not focus on that nasty attitude. 
so I don't get caught up in wanting to get in somebody's butt. It 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 makes a big difference. When you draw an eye to God, he will draw an eye to you. He says to cleanse your hand. That's part of cleansing your hands. It's like a little kid going up to the sink and mommy helps wash the baby's hands. Let God help wash your hands. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts. Let God help purify your heart. See, when it says be afflicted and mourn and weep, it's not telling you to be depressed. It's, not, <laughs> it's dealing with hate the sin enough to cry it off of you. Let your laughter be turned to mourning. Don't take it lightly. Mourn over the crap you see in you. Mourn over your own flesh and say, Lord, no, I don't want any of me. I rebuke me in the name of Jesus. And your joy to heaviness. You're burdened by the sinful nature you see still working in your members. You don't want to see anything in you pop up. You don't want to see Jack keep jumping up out the box. No, you don't want to go there. But the only way you're going to get control over Jack is to give the box. You know, Jack in the box, you give that to God. That's the way you handle that. Because you can't handle it. You can't handle Jack. Jack's handling you. You can't handle him. That's the old you, the old fleshly you, the old nature, the carnal you. That's Jack. So you hand that to God. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Now check out verse 11. <clears throat> this is what we want to do. We want to get on the phone. We want to vent. You know what that sucker told me? Uh, boy, I'm telling you, I, this is what I wanted. I, I, I wanted to tell him, boom, boom, blam, blam, boy, I was ready. I was getting my baseball bat. I was getting my boots because I was getting ready to shove it so far up. He would taste it out of his mouth. Listen to this. 11, verse 11. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, Thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. Hmm, there is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judges another? I don't care how many people judge you. You ain't got the right because you were bought with a price. You are not your own baby. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's the narrow part of this walk that we our flesh doesn't like. <laughs> okay we're gonna stop there and we're gonna go to remember i said all the verses okay now we're gonna go to james chapter five let me see yeah james chapter five and then we're gonna go to first corinthians chapter 12 so first we're gonna go to james chapter five all right now i just love this I love this. You guys totally confirmed that I was on the right page. Because I'm saying, now, why am I going from God's miraculous power over here last week, and now I'm talking about uh, attitudes and strife and fighting and all that? And it's like, okay, Lord, I'm on the right page. You guys so confirmed it. Okay. Verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth and have long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Verse 9. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Part of our anger is us being judgmental. We don't realize it, but it is. Being judgmental is part of pride. We don't realize it, but that's what it is. God knows it. But see, that's all the flesh that he's steadily scrubbing off of us. With every fight, with every moment of conflict, with every, um, uh, oh boy, with, 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 with every upheaval in life, he is steadily doing the cleaning process. And if we stand still, 
and know that he is God. Let him do his God thing before we jump and do our man thing, our human thing, our flesh thing, our attitude thing. We'll grow in leaps and bounds. But we must still ourselves when we want to jump out that box. No, refrain from it. Do not allow yourself. Do not indulge those babyfied emotions. Because once God starts doing the healing, those emotions won't be there. All right. All right. Let's go to, uh, to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Hmm. Now, I'm going to share something with you. Share this with you. Because this is what the devil tries to do. See, when you're, if you look at the body, look at the anatomy of the body. And you look at how the body works in, in sync with itself. Now, I'm going to do another demonstration. So y'all fly with me on this. For those who can see, for those who can't see, you're going to have to watch the video. Now, hang on. Watch this. Okay. Let me get this out of the way. And I want to share this. Now, here I am. Let's, let's put my phone on the, on the chair. All right. Now, here I am. I am walking down the street, and I see something, and I, oh, I see it with my eyes. But my feet brought me there. Now, I reach with my hand. I pick it up. And my hands open it up, my eyes look, and I'm like, wow, look at that. I think I'll keep this. And you put it in your pocket, and you walk on over, and you find a seat somewhere, right? And your back, your thighs, your legs, every part of you helps you sit down. Now, I was able to do that. But now, let's say that my body is fighting itself. And I'm going to read the scripture before I go to the illustration. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, okay. Help me find it, Lord. Verse 14. Verse 14. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Come on now. Verse 17. If the whole body were an eye, where was the healing? Hearing. If the whole were hearing, where are the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, then where were the body? But now they are many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more, those members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary. And these members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comely, comeliness. For our comely parts have no need. But God had tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to the part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. Mm. And whether one member suffer, all members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts. And yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Verse 13 excuse me, chapter 13, verse one, 
And I'm going to stop right there. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity love, I am become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. I'm nothing but a bunch of noise. Now, let's go on. I want to show you this about the body. We've discussed the body. All this is based on love. That's why I had to read that. Now, I'm going to show you this illustration. There are people who are diagnosed with certain spastic uh, dysfunctions in their body. All right. Now, now, if I want to walk, my mind tells me I want to walk forward, put my chair in position, sit down and finish preaching this word. But my hand says, I want to go to the refrigerator and I want to grab some ice. And my left foot says, I want to go over and look out the window. I want to go to the window. I want to go left. My right foot says, I want to go straight ahead. Okay. My back says, I want to sit down. My neck under my head that wants to go forward says, I want to hang my head down and rest my neck. I don't want to do anything right now. This is what you're going to end up with. You, you got stuff going one way. You got something going another. This is all one body. Many members, arms, fingers, eyes, ears, legs, hips, everything. But they all got a mind of their own. What happens? I'm trying to make myself come forward, but there's a part of my body pulling me over here. And then there's a part of my body that wants to sit down. And before I know it, I'm a spastic mess getting nothing done. Totally dysfunctional. That's why the body of Christ is so weak. Because there's so many members in the body of Christ that will not come in, lock, come in alignment with God's way. They got their own mind. They got their own goals. When you have that spastic thing going on, you're not going to get much done. You're not going to make it to the goal. It's going to take you a hundred times longer. You ever watch a person sit in a wheelchair and they've got cerebral palsy and they're sitting there. Somebody wants to give them something to drink. And they can hold their own glass. Oh, here's my glass. They can hold their own glass, but they want to put it to their mouth. This is the hand. That's the job of the hand. They want to put it to their mouth, but somehow the wires are crossed, and they've got to really concentrate to get that glass to their mouth. Look how long it's taken to get the glass to the mouth because the body the nervous system is dysfunctioning and the different members have a mind of their own. You're trying to get the glass. Okay, there it is. There it is. Yeah. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, come on back over here. Mm -hmm. mm. I could have spilled it on myself because my hand could have jerked it back away too soon. Anything, or I could have dropped the glass and broken it, made a mess. All that, just to pick up a glass with the body working in sync, Take a sip, satisfy my thirst, I'm done. When we look at the body of Christ, and this is for all you YouTubers, all the friction, all the conflict, all the emotional scars, all the issues, all the sensitive spots, all the temperaments, all the attitudes, all of your pride, all of the things that have got you so tied up in knots. And all of you are in here going through all this. And it takes so long for the body to become powerful and effective. Because all the members have got their own wars going on. 
And nobody wants to be bothered with that one. And that one doesn't want to be bothered with her. And he doesn't want to be bothered with him. And all of this conflict is going on. What does God say? Let there be no schism in the body. We must ask God. We must humble ourselves before God so he can exalt us with honor. But the way we humble ourselves is we look at the man in the mirror. We ask God to show us truthfully what we need to adjust in ourselves as an individual. It starts on an individual basis, but then it comes in sync with the body. And the body can only function in sync with God, in sync with one another, in unity, in sync with God, in love. We wonder why the world is going crazy. The body of Christ is out of sync. The body of Christ is out of alignment. Now we dealt with the little personal things. That's part of the growth process. We got to go through that. There are going to be times when you handle things well, and there are going to be times when you tell somebody off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you get a little in your flesh. As part of your growth and your cleansing process. But as the body of Christ, we cannot bicker and bite on each other. We cannot have a screw you attitude. Why don't you just drop dead? Why don't you just go to hell? Why don't you just kiss my royal you know what? I mean, we cannot allow flesh to rest rule and abide in the body of Christ. You will have a spastic mess. People get hurt. And then we wonder why so many people who are born again have, have totally uh, just disengaged, abandoned the body of Christ. We have to be careful. We have, that's why we have to seek God. The more we seek God, the more we resist the devil. The more we resist the devil, the more he stays out of our business. The more he stays out of our business, the more the body of Christ can come into alignment and in sync with God, his love, his ways, his peace, his purpose. The unity of the body of Christ can make things happen in this world, can make us effective in this world. It's not just about me, not just about you. Mm -mm. No. All this healing we need is about the body, baby. There's a kingdom, an unseen kingdom, the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God there's a supernatural thing going on. There are supernatural wars, supernatural battles going on, things in the invisible world. But we must handle the natural through the invisible power God gives us from the kingdom. And we have to access that power through honesty, through humility, through obedience, through prayer. And prayer is not just I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep or the uh, 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 Lord, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will. No. Prayer is handled in the moment right then and there. That volleyball comes to you, you pop it up in the air, you, you pounce back in the enemy's face. You don't hold on to the ball. Whatever Satan throws at you, don't hold on to it and own it. Don't become one with the confusion. Don't become one with strife. Don't become one with anger. No, you bat that thing back in the devil's face. No, that ain't mine. That's your crap. You take it back. Father, take the anger out. Father, take the hurt feelings out. Father, heal me from when that, when that happened when I was four years old. I'm so sensitive in that area. Lord, I can see the pride humbling yourself through honesty. I can see the pride Lord, remove the pride. Cleanse me of all pride, all filthiness of the flesh. Cleanse me from it. 
so that I don't bring too many contaminants into the body of Christ. We're all contaminated because we're human. We were born in sin. We're shaping an iniquity. It comes natural. Nobody has to teach you to be a fool. Nobody has to teach you to act a fool. Nobody has to teach you how to cut somebody out. Nobody has to teach you how to jump in somebody's behind and beat them down. Nobody has to teach you to do it. It comes natural. Do you want to live in the natural or do you want to rise to the supernatural and experience the supernatural love, the supernatural peace, the supernatural joy of God? You want to enjoy the supernatural harmony of the body of Christ working in sync with the word of God, the ways of God, the love of God, the power of God in the authority of the name of Jesus Christ, taking authority over demons, taking authority over thoughts that would exalt themselves against the knowledge of Christ, taking authority over your emotions that would make a fool out of you and show your narrow or wide behind. We must seek God. If my people, Second Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name, it's my people, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, humble themselves, let me repeat, humble themselves and pray and seek my face, not their face, not their attitude, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then, well, I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. You want him to heal your land? Do everything I told you. Lord, heal my heart. Lord, take the anger out. Lord, don't let me get caught up in their nonsense. But Lord, help me get the truth out of it. Even if it's mixed with a bunch of crap. Let me get the truth out of it that I need in order to grow the way you want me to grow so I can become who you want me to become so I can do what you want me to do and I can accomplish what you want me to accomplish in the body of Christ. Okay, now, now that we've had our Holy Ghost tongue lashing, <laughs> God bless you, be encouraged because we are all a work in progress. But we must keep going to God. We must keep everything in God's hand. Relinquish your own control. Take your hands off of it. And bat that ball back. back bat the crap back at Satan. And bat your emotions up to God so that you don't have to deal with those emotions. Because until you heal, your emotions are going to flare up. And the way to get control over you, hmm, take authority over you. Hmm. Take authority over your wounds, hello, and your sensitive sore spots and your pride is to say, God, take it out before I go off in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you take my advice and start exercising those things I told you. Read God's word. It'll help you line up. Reading God's word will help you line up with his ways, his characteristics. Watch how Jesus did stuff. And if it's opposite to the way you handle stuff, pray on that. You got an issue with somebody talking about your big toe? Ask God to heal that wound. It may, see, we look at things like it's got to be monumental. You got to be raped by 10 men at gunpoint, being beaten, being held captive and all that in order to have something to get over. No, no. It's the, the Bible says, it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. And Satan will get you with those little things, those little issues of yours that send you exploding like, a, like a, uh, an, uh, an atom bomb. Little things make you go off, boy. Little catalysts can, can really set off a major fire. But you can put out the fire through prayer. God, take it out. Diffuse the weapon inside. Diffuse my emotions. Change the way I react to things. Change the way I feel about things by healing the hurts that so easily make me flare up. 
And I mean, pursue God on a daily basis for your healing, baby. Because I'm going to tell you, I don't know you. I can't see you. I'm looking at a little green dot in this computer. But you are a mess. And you know how I know you're a mess? Because I was a mess. Every single one of us are born a mess. Born in sin and shaping in iniquity. And the only one that has the power to change the spots of a leopard is God. He's the only one who can remove your spots, your wrinkles, your holes in your soul, your pride, your flesh, your sinful ways, your nasty attitude. Hmm. He's the only one that can control it. Relinquish your control, baby, and give it to God. And watch. The changes take place as you soar above your enemies. God bless you. Be encouraged. Your change is coming. And it'll keep coming and keep coming and keep coming. <laughs>